Hello again. Hello. I'm sorry if the last section kind of scared you off. It was, it was kind of a tough section. You know, you know this is it's probably unique in a lot of math classes because I think the last section was the hardest in the chapter. And now we're getting back to more easy stuff, which is kind of weird. But if, I don't know, I hope that makes you feel better. If you really thought the last section was tough, it's, this is better, I think. A lot easier. Um, so this, uh, this section is titled Euler Diagrams and Systolic... Oh, sorry, I always want to say systolic, like, isn't that a blood pressure term? Syllogistic arguments. <laughs> systolic. Because I think, because I didn't never heard the word syllogistic before this section. Um, okay, and as you can imagine, Euler diagrams is named after some dude. Leonard Euler. I know that's, it seems like that's not how you pronounce that name, right? It's really how you pronounce it. They just wanted to spell it special because he thought he was special. Leonard Euler, in the 1700s, he was a Swiss mathematician who made many, oh my gosh, I put that word many because you see his name all over, calculus and all kinds of math places, many contributions to mathematics, and then, if, is it that, was, that wasn't enough, he wants to show off and make uh, make physics and astronomy applications too, He's trying to make us all look bad. Um, his power of mental calculation, this guy, he might be an interesting one to write your paper on, and his amazing memory allowed him to continue his career even after losing vision to both his eyes. Can you imagine that? This dude lost vision to both of his eyes and he's still doing math and physics and astronomy. He's making me feel bad over here. But oh well. You know, don't feel bad though if you think about it. Back in the 1700s, what else was there to do, right? There's no Xbox or Netflix or anything interesting like that. I don't know, just do math, read a physics book, write some astronomy stuff. You know, so don't, don't be too hard on yourself. Anyway, we study his diagrams in this section, which are created to assess the validity of what they call syllogistic arguments. So, okay, just if you're saying, what the hell, I never heard that word in my life, don't worry, we're about to explain what the heck a syllogistic argument is. Or syllo... say syllogism or syllogism? I don't know. Who, who cares? They're arguments of one of the following forms. So, we actually kind of saw one of these as an example in the very beginning of the previous, um... Um, previous section, all blanks are blanks, like that. All dogs are hairy. No blanks are blanks. No doctor is short. You know, or no doctors are short, I guess I should say. Some blanks are blanks. Oh, you know, <laughs> and I forgot to put an example. Some, I don't know, you can pick whatever you want. Some computers are uh, self aware. Ooh, don't be scared. That's creepy, right? <laughs> okay, I'm getting weird now. Some blank are not blank. Yeah, so you can have a not in there. Some, uh, what? Some dudes are not happy? I don't know. You can get weird with it if you want. Who comes up with that weird stuff? Alright, the good thing is, if you're tired of truth tables because the, the last section was tough, don't worry. No truth tables here. All we're doing is drawing a Venn diagram. That's it. Let's see, how about for all? All dogs are hairy. We'll draw a Venn diagram. All dogs are hairy. Well, I think, to me, that would mean, let's say, here's a circle with all the hairy stuff in it. Hairy stuff or hairy people. Well, if all dogs are hairy, then dogs must be contained within that circle, right? Because there might be other things that are hairy, like cats, I guess, are outside the red circle. But if all dogs are hairy, then that circle has to be entirely contained within hairy. Because if any part of the dog circle was outside the hairy circle, that would imply that there are dogs that aren't hairy, which goes against that statement. And the next statement, or the next example, no doctor is short. Okay, I guess that means, well imagine, here's a set of all short people, or, I don't know, short ob objects, people, animals, whatever. If no doctor is short, that would mean that those cannot cross, I guess, right? There's no doctor that's inside that short circle. And if that's true, then definitely there's no short inside the doctor. So they must pretty much that means they're disjoint. Remember that word? No doctor is short. That means doctors and short are disjoint. What's the next one we have? Some computers are self-aware. Some computers are self-aware. So I guess that means let's say here's the circle full of self-aware people and things. Well, I guess if some, uh, what's it called? Some computers are self-aware. That just means they intersect somewhat, but I'm not sure how much. Here's a circle full of computers. 
As some of them are self-aware. The ones that are self-aware must be here in the, the intersection. And the last one, what is it? Some dudes are not happy. Why did I come up with that? That was very random. Some dudes are not happy. Alright, let's say here's happy people. Or happy people thing, whatever. Some dudes, okay, so this is actually a tough one. If some dudes are not happy, that just means there has to be some part of the dudes that are outside the happy. So you know what the, uh, what's it called, sorry, the, the Venn diagram for this is the exact same as the previous. Because if someone said some dudes are not hairy, that just means that we want this part out here that's outside the hairy circle. So that doesn't mean that they don't, they don't intersect at all, you know? That would be only if they said all dudes are not hairy, but some, yeah. So anyway, okay. So keeping that in mind, I think that'll help these a lot. Um, let's see, example one. Use an Euler diagram to determine whether the syllogism <laughs> is valid or invalid. So let's see, the first part A says, all planets are satellites. Okay. So that means, maybe I'll color code it, that kind of helps. So I'm going to say planets, I'm going to make one circle for that guy. Let me say satellites is another circle. Just gotta think about how they're gonna go. And I think we have Picard, okay. Well that's you know Picard is gonna be one um point, because Picard is only one item. Planets that encompasses a lot of things, satellites encompasses a lot of things, but Picard is only one thing. It's a planet. Um or sorry, it's a satellite. It's okay. I'll try to make a Venn diagram out of that first statement. All planets are satellites. Okay, so that sounds like the very first example we drew up there. If this is a circle full of the satellites... Ah, I should have made it blue. Hello. Hello. I'll just mess around by putting a new color around satellites. And where are planets? Well, if all planets are satellites, then planets must be inside the satellite right there. Okay, Picard is a satellite. Well, would that mean that point Picard should be... See, that's the thing. Picard is a satellite. That means it could be out here, because that's still in the satellite, or it could be in here. We just don't know. So we want to know, does that imply the conclusion? Does that imply the conclusion? And we'll just look at our picture and see whether it's true. Picard is a planet. Do you think that's necessarily true by the picture we drew? I'd say no. Picard could be outside the planet circle. Like we said, they said that Picard is a satellite. It didn't say whether it was a planet, so it could be inside the satellite circle, but outside the planet or inside the planet. We just don't know. So I'd say definitely it doesn't imply that that Picard that, that has to be inside the planet circle. So no. Definitely not. So this is, these are arguments that are a lot easier to test than the ones in the previous section. Just using kind of, I think this section uses logic that you kind of already had in your mind already. All right, part B is very weird. All Jeffs are Bills. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna make a circle for all the dudes named Jeff in the world, and all the dudes named Bill are gonna have their own circle. Okay, let's see. So all Jeffs are Bills. That sounds like if this is all the Bills. All the Jeffs are in there somewhere. Okay, where is Jeff? Oh, wrong color. Am I colored one? Maybe. Jeffs are in there. All Jeffs are built. Okay. And then, oh, there's Dugs too. Oops, I mean, they're colored. I didn't notice that. Where's this guy, Doug? Here he is. No Bills are Dugs. Okay, what does that mean? No Bills are Dugs. That must mean that Bills and Dugs don't intersect. Doug must be, I don't know where he is, but the Dugs are somewhere outside that circle Bill, so they don't intersect at all. Yeah, at all. Okay, does that mean no Jeffs or Dugs? That's what I'm asking myself. Does my Venn diagram imply no Jeffs or Dugs? Yes. I'd say yes because, look at if the, if the Bills and the Dugs are not intersecting, that means that Jeffs and Dugs are not intersecting either. Jeffs and Dugs don't intersect. They have nothing in common, really. So, they have nothing in common. So it's 
Yes, that is a valid argument. Yeah, isn't this a lot easier? I love this section. Especially when it's right on the tails of the last section, you know? Okay, so this one says, some mushrooms are poisonous. Okay, so let's say, blue will be the circle full of mushrooms, and then maybe red will be um, the circle of poisonous stuff. A morel is a mushroom. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but I shouldn't admit this, but I don't really give a crap. No offense. Um, okay. I think so. They're talking about mushrooms, poisonous stuff, and morels. Okay, some mushrooms are poisonous. I think like we discussed above, when you see the word some, all you can really conclude is that they intersect a little bit. So here. Poisonous stuff in there. Mushrooms here. Mushrooms. I just don't know how much they intersect. I just know that some, they share some stuff, but I'm not sure how much. A morel is a mushroom. Okay, where's mushrooms again? Mushrooms are... And morel, I guess, it's only one item. Huh? Morel. It's like one type. So it'll be a circle. That's usually how you do it. If, if it's a group of things, it's a circle. Um, but if it's just one one thing or one item, it's a little dot. A morel is a mushroom. Okay, that doesn't really tell me much. That means it could be here or here. We don't know really where it is. Morel. All we know is it's inside that blue circle, but we don't know where. Does this diagram by the conclusion. A morel is poisonous? No. No, that's because it would only apply that if the dot for morel was right in the intersection there. But it's not necessarily. A morel may not be in the intersection. It could be the second place we wrote, where it's out inside mushroom but outside poisonous. There's nothing in that argument that would imply that. In the intersection. So this was not a good argument. Alright, next guy. All dolphins are mammals. Okay, let's see. Dolphins would be the green circle. And um, let's say... Yeah. And then mammals would be the second circle. Alright, what else do we got? Vertebrates. Okay. So there's three things going on there. The first, the first thing we talked about though is only talking about dolphins and mammals. Okay, all dolphins are mammals. That sounds, oh, that sounds like the dolphin circle is contained within the mammal circle, right? So here's my mammals. If all dolphins are mammals, then all the dolphins must be in this circle. Something like that. Okay, now let's add the second statement. All mammals are vertebrates. Okay. Mammals are vertebrates. Well, that makes it sound like the mammal circle is contained within a larger circle. Whoop. Yeah, there must be a larger circle that mammals are contained within vertebrates. Alright, I think that makes sense. Alright, then does that imply all dolphins are vertebrates? Yes. It does imply that because the dolphins are within, or the, yeah, the dolphin circle is contained entirely within the vertebrate circle. Yeah, it's, so hopefully this seems like it's getting easier and easier. Okay, part E. No jockeys, so I guess jockeys are some circle, weigh more than 200 pounds. Okay, so maybe, that's kind of a weird one to think about, but maybe we'll do another circle where, another circle will be things that weigh more than 200 pounds. I don't know, things or people or, I don't know. People who bleh, weigh more than little bit. And then they say, Deb is not a jockey. Well, I think Deb, since she's only one person, she's not... Like I said, all Debs. You know, like in that weird previous example, all Bills are Joes and all Doug, no Dugs are Bills. That's a big group of Bills. Sorry. But the way they phrase this, Deb is only one person. So she's going to be just a dot instead of a circle. Um, let's see, no jockeys weigh more than 200 pounds. So I think like we've like we've seen, uh, I'll just say greater than 200 pounds will be this circle. But if no jockeys are in that circle, that just means there's going to be two circles, a red and a blue one, that do not intersect at all. I don't really know how they look, which one's bigger, but... Oh, sorry. I'm supposed to make it look like they don't intersect, sorry. I should erase. Time out, sorry about that. Let me erase this a little bit earlier. 
There we go, okay. So they're not supposed to intersect. And then one. Deb is not a jockey. Alright. Well, Deb is not a jockey, that just means Deb is outside, <coughs> excuse me, the red circle. So that means she could be out here, outside of both circles, or in here. So it doesn't really give us enough information to say where Deb goes. She's just definitely not in the red circle. So does that imply Deb weighs more than 200 pounds? No. Because she could be in the blue circle or outside. We don't know. It doesn't give us enough information. Or you can draw a flower if you want. You don't have to tell anyone. I won't. It's, it's, your, it's your own prerogative. Some flowers love sunlight. Okay, well, I guess. So here's a circle full of flowers. This is kind of a weird one, but I guess um, the other circle that we're intersecting it with would be things that love sunlight, I guess. So that's kind of a weird way to say it. Love sunlight. I mean, who doesn't love sunlight? Well, I guess everybody likes sunlight. Maybe they don't love it. Especially if you get sunburned like me. Terrible. But alright, some flowers love sunlight. That means they intersect a little bit at least. And what else? All things that love sunlight love the water. Okay, okay. So, okay. All things that love sunlight love the water. That sounds like that those guys are entirely contained within this larger circle. Things that love the water. Alright, all things that love sunlight, okay, all the red stuff, has to be blue stuff too. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay, so does this conclusion make sense from our picture? Some flowers love water. Yes. Because there, there definitely isn't part of this flower circle that's part of the blue as well. If you didn't like the last section or you found it challenging, I hope this section is a lot easier. So see, I'm using logic, and this kind of helps too, um, with a lot of things in real life. But I hope it was easier to understand, and yeah, if you need to view this section again, don't, don't worry about it, it's fine. Or if you want to see the previous section again, that's fine too. But uh, thanks for listening, have a nice day, I'll see you at the next section.